I'm gonna do a quick tutorial for some for a hitbox expander. Now this is I feel a universal script, so this should work in almost any game. And I'll also show a quick bypass you can do to try and bypass any anti-cheat the game may have. So get straight into it, it's a pretty simple script. Start off by defining the players. And we'll also get the local player. Then for this we need the character parent. As some games put them in folders rather than just the workspace. So it's best practice to make a check for where they actually st so for that I'll just make a function. Uh to get chart here. And we'll put it. And then we can just loop through uh, every we'll do every descendant of workspace. This just gets everything inside of the workspace because we know the character module is going to be character model is going to be stored inside the workspace, and we want to check check it against our local player. So if String dot find, and we'll be checking the char, the character's name, and if we find the local player's name inside of it, and char. Actually, might be worth putting. To make sure it actually exists when we're on this then this will work and if we do find it then we can set our variable to the character the character's parent which will return whatever the parent is of so the parent's workspace this will be stored as workspace and break the loop and then just return it that way we can connect a variable to the result local chance will parent equals get chart parent and this will store whatever we return from here which will be the character parent inside this variable now we'll also do the hitbox size just the default size of 15s a fairly default size And also hitbox color as well. I'll just make it red. And then now they've done that, you can start with the main function, sign hitboxes, and for that we'll take in one parameter as player. And to double check that the player's not our local player, let's do if player. And that will just exit the function to make sure we don't change the hitbox for our player. Now we can just start the loop. You know? I'll do hitbox connection. I'll use run service for this, so this should run every frame. Uh, what's the first thing? Should check for. Should check for. Actually, we should make a variable for the hitboxes. Do that way we can add a check here. Then. And first thing we'll need is the character. And we want to reference the parent that we've found as we search within that. For the player.name, as the character should be named the same as the player. And we'll check if we've actually got that. So if char and char 
generally root bar. Uh, and we'll also we don't we don't don't want to constantly update it if we don't have to. So I'll add a check here as well, and uh, I'll put in brackets to make sure it's separated. Uh, char dot human root bar dot size not equal to box size or this dot color same thing here not equal to hit box color that way the script will only run if uh, the hit boxes haven't already been updated that way it doesn't run every frame because that's not necessary so if that is the case, then we'll make our we'll make the changes. So char root bar copy this size equals our size up here. So that will change it to 15, 15, 15. Same with color. And our default color. And also you should change the can collide as well because you don't want to collide with their hitbox otherwise you won't be able to go near them and also transparency so we can actually see it's working and then if our var variable isn't enabled we can just disconnect the loop stop it from running Alright, that's the function done. Now I believe all that is left is just to run this function for every player. So start by doing it for every player in the game. This will get all the players in the game and run our function. You make sure to pass the player as the parameter. And then we also need to account for players who are joining the game. So you can do players up player added. And same thing here. Sign up for that player. Okay, I think that should be it. So I'll jump into a game and make sure that's Oh, whoops, I haven't put Huno root up for these. Just need to add that real quick. I'm not sure why I didn't put that. There we go. Okay, it should work now. Now if I run this in game. There we go. It's working. You can see that everyone now has a hitbox surrounding them, which is obviously much bigger than their actual one. And we're still able to run through it. Now this script is good, it's working, it will work for quite a few games, however some games will have an anti-cheat that checks, like if you're in a game that involves shooting, they will check where the bullet hits and if it's not actually within the, si the default size of the character then it will kick you from the game. So a good example of this is Assassin, so I'll jump into that and show you real quick. Okay, I'm in a game, so as you'll see if I throw my knife at someone, and there we go, it kicks me as the hitbox is way too big for what the game actually allows, and kicks me from the game obviously. Now to, now to prevent this, there is a way we can bypass it. This should work for most games which use humanoid root part detection which is just about every game. However, it's not supported on all executors. If the if your executor isn't typically level 7 or level 8, such as Solara or Xeno or JJ Sploit, then this won't work, but for every other executor it should. So for this bypass, I think put it up here before we start our hitbox stuff. 
and it's going to use a uh, get raw emitter table which is a like an old synapse function and it essentially gets the game's raw meta tables which we can then uh, I don't know use to our advantage so for this you can do we'll start by defining so local mt equals that's a table of game this will store it inside of this variable and when we're editing meta tables we need to use the set read only to actually allow us access to it we set it to false and we also need to preserve the old uh, flow so local old equals mt and we're using the index method as we're accessing the size property so it's just like that and that's two underscores by the way and then connect it to a function get the self and key and if two string self you know root part and two string key equals size then we're going to return the default which is uh vector three e two one one so this is the default size and if that isn't the case, then we'll just return the old flow, which is uh, old self key. And then, and then set the read only back to true. Once we're finished, now I believe that's all we need. And if you're wanting to put this in a script and you don't want it to break for people who have uh, executors that don't support it, you can wrap it in a p call. which just captures the error and stops it from breaking just like that okay so if we join back into assassin and run this again we should not get kicked anymore so now if i throw my knife at a hitbox i should not get kicked anymore with the new bypass yeah there we go don't get kicked at all need to find where the player actually is yeah no okay let's just dive in uh but yeah, it does obviously work as i didn't get kicked anymore oh actually it turns out it's two two one not two one one so just need to change that to make sure it actually returns the right value and then it'll work but as, as you saw it stopped me from getting kicked so it does work um, that's pretty much all I think one more thing is we should really reset the size down here just back to what it was so size uh, we'll make it all default Two to one and can collide to can collide doesn't matter actually. Transparency back to one and color uh, color doesn't matter because of the transparency anyways. So yeah, that's pretty much the hitbox script finished. Um, if you want to add this to a GUI then I'll give a quick example now so if you're wanting to add it to a GUI I'll just paste in the example real quick um, so this is Rayfield and you'll have a toggle why is it indented like that here we go uh, so you have your toggle here and all you need to do is grab the variable which is uh, this and set it to value which passes a boolean so it's either true or false and if value then uh, loop it for every player 
and then you can delete that and for the player added we only want to do it if our variable is true sign hitbox player. just like that that's all you have to do to add it to a uh, GUI and this will create a toggle so I'll pull that out real quick and also when doing this we need to move this up one line otherwise char will just be nil because I won't know what it is and then that should disconnect it so if I go into game real quick run it turn it on where are they hitboxes turn it off gets rid of the hitboxes and it's the default size perfect all right so yeah that's pretty much it for the tutorial it's a fairly simple script uh, it should work on almost any game. Some games it won't because their hit detection will be different, but for the most part it should work on just about any shooting or knife game. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll answer them. Uh, that's about all.